Final Cut Pro has an incredibly annoying but pretty easy to solve problem with many motion templates. Let's say that I just picked up my brand new ProZooms 3.0 update and I'm excited to use it down on my timeline. So I go ahead and click and drag ProZooms Plus to my timeline and we immediately see this big red error sign. Now the most common reason for this particular issue that I've seen is a versioning issue. It's pretty easy to solve. We can just right click on our template, go to reveal and finder and locate that particular template. We'll right click on it again, select open with, and we're gonna go to other. From there, we're gonna search for text edit in the top right corner and then select that as the app to open. Things will look absolutely crazy here, but all we're looking for are these top couple lines. You'll see that we have an OZML version 5.99 and a display version of 5.99. Now I intentionally messed these numbers up for this particular demonstration, but to solve this problem, you need to go onto Google, search up the correct OZML and display numbers and correct those here. So I happen to know that the correct numbers for my current version of Final Cut Pro are 5.14. Now that we've done that, we can push Command S to save it and close that out. So now if we go over to Final Cut Pro, you'll see that my ProZooms plugin is working just as it's intended. I have full control over the box and we're not getting that big red error sign. So that is relatively simple to fix on a single plugin basis. But what happens when we realize that all of the templates inside of ProZooms have this incorrect version number? And not just the title version, so all 11 of these, but also all 11 of the effects versions. That means we have to go to each and every template and update that number and it's so obnoxious. Now, if you've previously watched this channel, you might've seen me mention an awesome app called PFixer. PFixer solves this exact problem. You load in your templates, it fixes the numbers and outputs the correct file for you you're good to go. The problem with pfixer is it hasn't yet been updated for Apple Silicon Macs. And I previously reached out to the developers of pfixer and asked what was going on, why is it taking so long to open up? And they just said, because it's not made for Apple Silicon, it's working through a Rosetta layer, it really slows it down. And honestly, the newer the Mac is that I get, the slower this process takes. And so it was at that point that I decided I wanted to try and develop my own version of this app. So me, without any development experience at all, resorted to ChatGPT to create my first ever app. And I am ridiculously excited to share it with you here. So rather than going through that lengthy process of updating the file inside of TextEdit, instead, we just opened my motion template version tool app. I tried to make the app as incredibly simple to understand as possible. So nothing is gonna be really showing up here at the very beginning. All we need to do is select select folder. And from here, you can just immediately press open to load in all of your motion templates at the same time, or we can select an individual folder. So for this example, let's just go ahead and dive into my effects folder. That's gonna load in over 700 different templates in just a couple seconds time. Now that it's done, we can see that we have 743 templates loaded. You'll also notice though that I have some transitions and that is because I accidentally installed some transitions inside of that effects folder. We don't really need those, so I'm gonna go ahead and just press delete and that will completely remove those. From there, we can expand out the effects and you'll see the OZML and the display number that each of these templates has. Right now, they're all set to 5.0, but we need version 5.14. I'm not expecting anybody to go around and Google the correct number for their version of Final Cut Pro, so this has a great feature where it automatically detects the version of Final Cut Pro you're using and updates these numbers down here at the bottom to use those versions. If it happens to be selecting the wrong version, you can always just click this button in the bottom right corner and that will automatically update OZML and display. So now that we have the correct numbers set here, we can go ahead and make sure that backup on update is checked and we'll press update selected. It's then going to quickly go through and update all of these templates for us in just a matter of seconds. Just note, this has not been sped up. Just like that, we have gone ahead and updated 736 templates. It's 736 because we removed those transitions from earlier. And now you can see that the OZML and display numbers have been appropriately fixed on each of these templates all in one big batch. So from there, we are set. But before we close out this app, I do wanna quickly show you that you can go ahead and locate your backups folder 
and see all of the individual templates that it's converted over. So this is the original version of the template, and this is just to safeguard you in case something goes wrong during the conversion process. I have yet to see anything happen to break these plugins, but I just wanted to make sure that everybody is safe. If it's been a while, you'll notice that there's this clean backups button that appears after you cross the 50 megabyte threshold. So you can go ahead and press that, and it will ask if you want to move everything to the trash. We can go ahead and press yes and you should be good. So that's it. It's not a super fancy flashy app or anything like that, but it solves a super annoying problem that a lot of Final Cut Pro templates have. So how much does this amazing app that's going to save you hours and hours and hours of time cost? Well, I really wanted to make it free, but unfortunately I just put too much time and money into creating this app. So I'm just asking $5 for it. It cost me $20 to have ChatGPT, which I am relying on heavily to fix this app and continue development on it into the future. So for basically every four people that purchase this app, that gives me another month of ChatGPT so I can keep on fixing it. If you're interested in picking up this app for yourself, there are of course links down below. Just know that this is the first app I have ever created. It is still technically in beta. I'm trying it out on as many systems as I can. The earliest version of macOS that it should work on is macOS 10.14. I haven't been able to test it on anything earlier than that, so I'm not sure what will happen. So please, if you encounter any issues and you want me to get those patched in a future bug update, let me know by emailing me at dylan at thefinalcutpro.com. There's also a support link directly inside of the app under the help menu. With that being said, thank you so much for watching, and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.